Good evening and thank you for joining us for Krem to News at 5 tonight. I'm Mark Hanrahan. And I'm Whitney Ward. We're glad you're here. We begin tonight with a look at weather. Red flag warnings have been issued for the Inland Northwest, increasing our fire risk this evening. Let's get straight to Chief Meteorologist Jeremy Lagoo with a breakdown of the warnings tonight. Jeremy? Well, guys, it's one where we've already got wildfires burning and even more kind of starting up today. You can see the smoky haze in the atmosphere overhead, but red flag warnings stretch from the Cascades through North Idaho this go round. Last few, North Idaho wasn't quite in it. It was just not quite as dry there. The vegetation hadn't fully dried out. Unfortunately, now we're seeing that and with a few wildfires burning in North Idaho, it is likely they spread. Wind is going to pick up as we head through the evening. So far today, we've seen some pretty strong wind gusts and they continue to increase. Richland up to 33 miles per hour. Moses Lake 29, Wenatchee 31. Here in Spokane, Coeur d'Alene, Deer Park, and down across the Palouse, mid 20s is about where we've seen, but it does look like they are going to increase. I think kind of the six o'clock hour is going to be our strongest wind, and then it'll die down this evening. Now, when it comes to that wind, it is elevating our fire threat, but it comes along an advancing cold front. That cold front is bringing a little bit of moisture to central parts of Washington. We're seeing some of that kind of dissipate as it moves through, but even Moses Lake getting a couple of raindrops. The thing is, it's very dry in the low levels of the atmosphere, so a lot of this is not reaching the ground. I think it's a similar story here. We get some of it to try to squeeze out, but a lot of it doesn't reach the ground. But what does happen is our temperatures drop. Tomorrow, we top out near 80. Wednesday, 82. Thursday, 86 degrees as our temperatures start climbing headed into the weekend. All right, Jeremy, thank you. Also right now we are tracking a fast moving wildfire that has closed both directions of I-90 near Kittitas this uh, afternoon. It's right there at the Vantage Bridge and according to WashDOT, the fire was started when this semi truck caught fire. That fire is burning in the dry brush right along the road right now. There is no estimate for when I-90 will be reopened as fire crews work to get the fire under control. Take a look at today's top stories. Today began the trial of the woman charged with killing her boyfriend in a car crash two years ago. Selena Juarez is charged with vehicular homicide in the death of Brandon McDonald. According to Spokane Police, Juarez crashed her car with McDonald in the passenger seat back in 2021. After an investigation, police say they believe she was impaired at the time of the crash. Daybreak Youth Services continues its legal fight against the Department of Health. At the end of last week, a judge extended the temporary restraining order that prevents them from operating. The judge's ruling comes just days after the DOH suspended the license of yet another counselor for having an inappropriate relationship with the teenage patient. Graham 2's Kyle Simchuk learned the latest allegations surfaced after that teen died of an overdose. This is now the second counselor at Daybreak Youth Services accused of having sex with a minor patient. The Department of Health suspended her license earlier this month, but the allegations go back to 2021. According to court documents, Madison Tabor began working at Daybreak in August 2021. Two months into her employment, she was confronted by staff about patient boundaries and rumors she was in a relationship with a 17-year-old patient. In November, Daybreak's director of mental health submitted a critical incident report after another patient came forward and reported Tabor's inappropriate conduct. In December 2021, staff received reports that Tabor was in a sexual relationship with a patient. Court docs say the patient described Tabor as the love of her life and kept the relationship a secret, worried Tabor would be fired. Court docs say Tabor wrote love letters to the 17-year-old, bought her jewelry, and had a drawing from another patient tattooed on her own body and demanded nude photos from another patient. Tabor left Daybreak in May 2022 and reportedly told a former co-worker she wished the 17-year-old would die of a drug overdose so their relationship would end, according to court docs. That patient did in fact die of a fentanyl overdose this February. This May, the Department of Health suspended Daybreak's license to operate and claimed the facility failed to cooperate with DOH on public safety investigations, failed to make mandatory reports, and failed to respond to allegations of staff misconduct. Tabor is accused of sexual misconduct as well as unprofessional conduct. Reporting in Spokane, Kyle Simchuk, Krem2 News. Apex Cannabis in Otis Orchards reopened today after an early morning burglary forced the store to close yesterday. We actually have video of the break in, so take a look. Just before 4 a.m. on Sunday, three people used a stolen car to ram their way into the building. Police think the three suspects are teenagers. They tripped the alarm but managed to grab some merchandise and escape in a getaway car before Liberty Lake Police and the Sheriff's deputies could get there. They left the stolen car behind.
once they did get into the store, um, they didn't have a lot of time to get too much and they did choose to take some of our lesser expensive items and very little damage to the building. The owners of the shop told Crime 2 it's still too early to know exactly how much was stolen or how much repairs will cost. If you do have any information though about the teens in this video, investigators are asking you to please call the Spokane County Sheriff's Office and that number is right there at the bottom of your screen. The deadline has just passed for the man accused of murdering four University of Idaho students last year to submit an alibi. Last month, Brian Koberger's attorney asked for more time to provide his alibi to the court. They said they needed more time to go through all the evidence given to them by the prosecution. Koberger will be back in court next Tuesday. His trial is still currently scheduled to start on October 2nd. Five white nationalist group members have been released from the Cooney County Jail after being found guilty of conspiracy to riot last week. The men were sentenced to five days in jail with two days already served. So after serving the last three days, the men will now serve one year of unsupervised probation. The five men were part of a group of 31 suspects who were arrested in the back of a U-Haul last year on their way to the Coeur d'Alene Pride event. While the judge gave them jail time, judgment against the five men will be withheld. And in Idaho, that means their conviction won't appear on any court records once their probation is over. The men were also fined $1,000 each.